Hello and thank you for joining me. This is Tally Simic Knight. And today's lesson is the Hierophant Tarot card. And today I will look at its everyday interpretation in a tarot reading and also go into its deeper esoteric and Kabbalistic significance. Um, so the tarot is a set of images they're a set of images um, that are used for divination and um, especially in some parts in Europe they are popularly used in game playing um, and then also tarot is used to represent different concepts it is a set of sacred images or symbols so today's lesson is the Hierophant card in many earlier decks, it was referred to as the Pope. The Pope. So that is the older name of the card. It was renamed by Court de Geblin in the 18th century, and then this was picked up as the Hierophant in the Rider-Waite-Smith deck and lots of later decks. So let's take a look at some different versions of the card. Uh, this is the Rider-Waite-Smith deck. It says the Hierophant. It's the Hierophant card from the Rider-Waite-Smith deck. This is the Tarot of Marseille, more popular in French occultism. Again, you see a Pope-like figure. He makes the blessing of benediction. Has the triple crown, the triple cross. Two pillars of Joaquin and Boaz behind him, two kneeling monks. And if you look in the corners, it says Il Papa, Le Pop, the Pope. Of course, down there, the Hierophant. And then this is the Oswald Worth deck, which takes the symbolism of the Tarot of Marseille and um, adds corrections of the French occultist Eliphas Levy. So this is the Oswald Worth deck. And something interesting, which I'll get into later, is you see it's ascribed a different Hebrew letter than we're doing it. Um, here it's ascribed to He, which is interesting um, because uh, to, many, to many people it's actually the letter Vav. And then one more I'll show you for today. Uh, this is the Book of Tot by Aleister Crowley. Again, you see the Hierophant figure. Um, as you can see, it's ascribed to the letter Vav and to Taurus. So, what is the Hierophant card? What is this all about? And what does it mean in a tarot reading? Um, learning to read tarot is actually a lot simpler than many people think. Lots of people feel that they have to memorize a bunch of keywords, um, read through a bunch of tarot books with different interpretations of the card, which that's very useful. Um, but tarot is a set of images. It is a picture book. Okay, it is symbolic language. So what does the image itself tell you? This is a Pope-like figure. Not necessarily Christian, you know, Pope, but it's that type of an image of a Pope-like figure. Whereas the Emperor, which we did last time, um, is um, has to do with authority on uh, I guess the material plane and government. Um, the Hierophant has to do with intellectual authority, spiritual authority. Um, so the Hierophant is a Pope-like figure. He is the expounder. Again, in many older versions of the deck, it's referred to as the Pope. Um, and then this was renamed in many modern decks as the Hierophant. Now, the Hierophant was um, the Hierophant was an officiating priest um, in the mysteries of Eleusis, okay? And the word Hierophant comes from two Greek words. Hieros means sacred or holy. And Phanon means reveal or to show. So Hierophant means to reveal the sacred to show the holy or the sacred. This is an expounder of the mysteries. So, what does the Hierophant card mean in a reading? Again, 
Each tarot card could represent a person. They could represent a situation. Um, they could represent different aspects within ourselves. So the Hierophant, many people get the image of a priest or a preacher of some kind. Um, some type of a religious authority. Um, it could be a Wiccan high priest. It could be um, a Hoongan or Mambo, a Voodoo. It could be, you know, any kind of a religious figure. But it's much more than that. The Hierophant is any person who is a teacher, someone that breaks down concepts for people, an expounder of mysteries, someone that expresses and explains um, deep, different mysteries. So for that reason, the Hierophant could represent a professor, any kind of a teacher. The Hierophant usually teaches some kind of an uh, traditional lore, a body of knowledge that has been built up over time. So the Hierophant could represent a professor at a university, any kind of a teacher, anyone that takes concepts and breaks them down for people. The Hierophant um, could represent um, anyone that teaches you a body of knowledge, okay? Now, this is not necessarily um, a person. The Hierophant could represent situations. So Hierophant could represent law school. It could represent law school because you're learning a codified body of knowledge of the different statutes, the different procedures in the courtroom. So it could represent law school. It could represent any kind of a traditional practice, such as medicine with different procedures, a different body of knowledge. Um, it could represent a scientist, believe it or not. So this is, if it's not a person, it could represent you being initiated into a body of knowledge, a traditional body of knowledge. Um, in spirituality, maybe you're going to join a Wiccan coven, or maybe you're going to join some um, fraternal order that's going to teach you different things. Um, maybe you're going to join, if it's not religious, you're going to get in, uh, trained in a body of knowledge. If, if you're getting trained in a new career, a new profession, then you're going to be instructed into that body of knowledge, whether it's carpentry or whatever you're doing. So as a person, the Hierophant is a teacher, someone that teaches a body of knowledge, okay? Or it could be a religious figure. And in situations, it could represent being trained into a body of knowledge. Now, the Hierophant also represents um, tradition, fixed procedure, um, routine, um, and the Hierophant could also represent, um, what do you call it? It could represent status quo, because it also has to do with, so, uh, like the Emperor had to do with government, you know, material government. This could have to do with procedures, rules, and regulations, and social proceedings. Um, so it could also represent uh, social conformity, things like that. So, if you get the Hierophant in a reading, it really depends on what the reading is about. Um, it would mean a different thing in a reading about love as it is learning about your job. So the Hierophant really has to do with education, knowledge, status quo, tradition. So if you get the Hierophant in a reading um, and it's to do with love, maybe it's telling you that you should go about things in a more traditional way. Maybe you shouldn't buck you know, their parents at a Thanksgiving dinner. Maybe you should kind of go with things how you're supposed to do it. Uh, maybe you're getting trained in a uh, special body of knowledge. Now, upright, usually it has pretty positive meanings. Now, reversed usually means the opposite of. So, reversed, this can refer to dogma. In fact, this is why many people are kind of disregarding tradition, is because it's seen as too rigid by many people today. Although, I think tradition and innovation 
form two twin pillars and he takes both sides. That's my opinion. Tradition is good because it keeps something with the past on course and innovators break with that so each one pulls on the other and keeps each one from going to too much of an extreme. So uh, many people, I guess today it's more popular to buck authority, but I'm very much a traditionalist in a lot of the stuff I study. Um, but anyways, Reversed, it could represent rigid dogma, um, social conformity. Reversed, it could also mean breaking away from the herd, doing your own thing, breaking away from what is traditional. So that's just a little bit about what the Hierophant card means. It could mean a religious figure, it could mean a teacher, a professor, any kind of a teacher, and it could also represent a body of teaching and learning. It could also represent status quo. It could be uh, getting trained into a traditional body of knowledge, religious or secular. So that's just a basic rundown of uh, the Hierophant card. It is the initiator, if you're getting initiated into a body of knowledge. Now, the Hebrew letter that's most popularly ascribed to the card is the Hebrew letter Vav. Vav, which in Hebrew means a nail. The letter Vav means nail. Okay, so the letter Vav means a nail or a hook. Now, a nail connects things. Um, also, a hook connects things. So, a nail um, is a connecting device. In fact, in Hebrew, it's the word and. So, it's the word and, such as this and that, the word v. So, it's about connecting. So the Hierophant connects you with the body of knowledge. Um, also, community. The Hierophant is all about community. So in law school, there's a bunch of people being trained into this collective body of knowledge. Um, it represents society, whether it's church institutions, whether it's a church, a synagogue, or an education system, or maybe learning a profession, a body of knowledge that others have. So. Um, the Hierophant uh, could represent, it has to do with community, okay? That's why it's often tied to a church organization. Or as a person, a teacher. Um, this is someone that usually teaches a group of people. Um, a professor wouldn't be much of a professor if he didn't have a class, you know. Just saying, y'all. Um, so it has to do with that idea. Now, a nail is also about nailing something down. It's about tradition. It is fixed, which is interesting because the letter Vav is ascribed to um, the astrological sign of Taurus, which there are many things that we can go into with the idea of the sacred bull and different traditions, the Cretan bull. Um, but Taurus is a fixed sign of the zodiac, which is interesting because the signs of the four evangelists are the images of the four fixed signs of the zodiac, the man, lion, bull, and eagle. Um, so it has to do with that. It is fixed. Fixed means that it's, okay, cardinal signs are good about getting things started. Um, fixed signs are about uh, perseverance. Fixed signs of Zodiac are about perseverance. It's about taking what was already started and going with it. Um, so again, the bull, often people say Taurians uh, or Tauruses are stubborn because uh, they're all about sticking with the plan. Um, they're about persevering, things like that. So Taurus has to do with tradition, routine. And again, Vav is about fixing. So with any traditional body of knowledge, this is something that has been passed on and on and on. It is somewhat fixed in a way. Again, I talked about, in my opinion, tradition and innovation are both important, um, but usually the Hierophant has to do with the fixed body of knowledge. Now, 
Oh my god. My fiance has food. <sighs> my viewers are important though. I'm almost done. My god. Okay. Back to the lesson at hand, y'all. So, this is the Book of Thoth of Aleister Crowley, Book of Thoth. You see, he sits on a throne, which is actually a bull. And behind him are elephants. I just talked about the four fixed signs of the zodiac. Man, eagle, bull, lion. Um, the elephants, according to Crowley's Book of Thoth, he breaks down the symbolism. He says that elephants also partake of the nature of, of Taurus. I guess because an elephant patiently prods ahead, whatever. So Taurus, um, part of the nature of a Taurus is tradition, routine, things like that. It is a fixed sign of the zodiac. And of course, if you get into, I guess, the more Christian Kabbalistic associations, a nail could be connected with the passion. Uh, of course, many of us today have break, broken away from, uh, you know, Christianity. So, um, but I guess 200 years ago, we would definitely be going into that. Um, so, it's about tradition, routine, and about, if it has to do with religion, it's about taking the sacred and breaking it down, down to earth, in a way that we can understand. And that's why it's also tied to um, a religious or spiritual practice, is because it has to do with routine, structure. So now we get into its deeper Kabbalistic interpretation. Now we get into its deeper Kabbalistic interpretation. So, each of the 22... Uh, major arcana connect uh, the Sephirot on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Now, as I always say, to me, it doesn't matter if tarot was originally tied to the Kabbalah or not. What's important is that tarot now is a very central aspect of the Western esoteric tradition. So it has now been plugged into representing all these deep Kabbalistic things. So some people get all into the history. Maybe it wasn't originally meant to be that way. To me, it doesn't matter. What's relevant is that now we've built up this uh, symbolic structure, um, which can be a powerful tool. So the Hierophant card connects the Sephira of Chokmah to Chesed. It connects Chokmah to Chesed, okay, on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. I need to hurry up, because we got food to eat, y'all. We got food to eat. So, there are the ten sephirot of the tree of life, and each of the 22 paths connect the ten se uh, sephirot. Of course, the ten sephirot are ascribed to the ten pip cards, um, and then the, the king, queen, knight, and page are ascribed to the four letters of tetragrammaton, uh, which are Chokmah, Bina, Teferit, and uh, Malkut. Um, so, the four suits, also the four Kabbalistic worlds, goes into the ten spheres of the Tree of Life. Okay, now the 22 major arcana connect the Sephirot, and they represent relationships. Now, I really don't have time to explain all of this in this video, so this is for the more advanced student that already knows about all this. I mean, I, I just don't have time to break. Um, well, maybe I could break it down a little bit, but basically 
The Hierophant connects Chokmah to Chesed. Now, Chokmah, these represent different attributes of the divine, perceived to be in the divine. Uh, they may be projections, but they also represent different qualities within ourselves, different aspects. It represents the process of creation. It represents the process of ascension. Um, the tree of life is a map of the psyche. And these ten qualities, this connects chokmah to chesed. Now, chokmah is a rush of energy. And it's also called the father, which is interesting because the older name of the card, the pope, uh, means father. Pope means father. Um, in like Spanish or Italian, it's Papa. So Pope means father, so that connects with Chokmah. So I'll just uh, put this here. Chokmah connects it with Chesed or mercy. Okay, so this path right here is the Hierophant. Now, Chokmah is a rush of energy, okay? It is just the unmanifested potential energy of the divine, which has its source in Keter. So Chokmah is just a rush of uh, divine energy. Now, Chesed is ascribed the number four, and the number four is all about structure, order in esoteric uh, number symbolism. Four, or the square, has to do with the manifest, order, structure. And of course, Chokmah has to go through Bina to get through Chesed. And Bina ascribes form, structure to things. So you could say that Chokmah sent the rush of energy into Bina, which gave form and structure manifesting as four, the four Sephira, which is Chesed. So the Hierophant is all about taking lofty divine concepts and breaking them down. And so it takes all these lofty concepts and breaks them down. I guess you could say into a set of religious teachings or a dogma. Um, so although dogma is not necessary, it has negative connotations today. Um, Certain sacred images, a set spiritual practice can be useful. So the Hierophant is about taking, I guess, this unknowable just energy, which is the unknowable aspect of the divine, and breaking it down uh, into a structure, an order, a religious practice. If you're a Thelemite, you may perform, um, you may perform Resh, you know, at the four stations of the sun. You may have a yoga practice, a meditation practice. Um, you may perform the LBRP. You may have different ritual structures. So whatever your spiritual practice, this order, um, this structure is used to get you to the divine. And that's what the Hierophant offers, more or less. The Hierophant is about taking all this unknowable aspect of the divine and breaking it down um, into a set of practices, whatever. And the nature of a Taurus is very much in line with routine, with perseverance. So many people that are wanting to obtain enlightenment, um, have spiritual realization, uh, many people do not have a fixed structure. And this could be an obstacle for some people. For some people it's not. But a, a set of practices, a routine, a spiritual set of practices are a way to access the divine. So whatever you're doing, if it's uh, meditating every day, a yoga practice, any kind of a, a structure, something that you do day after day after day, or every so often. This structure is used to help us to access the divine. And it also helps to break these concepts down. So in the Kabbalah, connecting Chokmah to Chesed is about taking that divine energy, bring it down to a lower level on the pillar of mercy. Yaakin takes Chokmah and brings it down to the level of Chesed 
which is also the level of loving kindness. Okay? And in many spiritual practices have to do with loving kindness, mercy, and also it has to do with expansion, with giving. Okay? So this also shows you that this religious structure that helps us to access the divine, again the number four, from Chokmah down to Chesed, kind of breaking this down into a structure you can do, um, this also is tied to love and loving kindness in the Kabbalah. Okay? And also, looking at the religious symbols, the rituals, and looking through them to see what is behind them. So, dogma can be a negative thing for many people if it's too restrictive. But having a set of practices could also be useful. So that is something that the higher fit uh, helps us with. And that's just one look at how it connects Chokmah down to Chesed. It takes that rush of energy and brings it down at a more manifest level on the Kabbalistic tree of life. Okay. So... I guess that's about it. And again, I don't claim that this is the truth. This is just one way of looking at the Hierophant card. So I encourage you to give your own opinions um, and to see what you think on these matters. Um, but that is a basic look at the Hierophant card. In a reading, it has to usually do with a teacher, someone who initiates you into a body of knowledge. It could be a professor, any kind of a teacher, it could be a religious figure, or it could also represent being educated or learning a body of knowledge. Um, it also has to do with community. And in that sense, sometimes the social con uh, uh, convention. So it is about tradition in some ways. So that is just a brief look at the High Refent tarot card. Um, so anyways, thank you for joining me, and I'll see y'all next time. And next time we will pick up with um, the lovers, and we'll go a little deeper into that from a Kabbalistic perspective. So thank you, and have a great day, everyone.